The following is an analysis, interpretation, and summary of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Chapter 14, How to Make Good Habits Inevitable and Bad Habits Impossible. So this chapter is still comprised within Law 2, um, How to Make Habits Attractive. So we're still in that category. And now this, this is a really, really powerful chapter here because we talk about uh, commitment devices, pre-commitment and implementation intentions and how they can dramatically increase the adherence we can for a new task or a new habit. Like I use this a lot in my coaching. It's very practical. And we'll talk about some different research and uh, science behind its efficacy. But last chapter, if you missed it, we talked about like if you procrastinate and you haven't seen chapter 13, go back, go listen, watch uh, chapter 13 on podcast, YouTube, um, on how we can implement strategies using this two minute rule to break through the procrastination of, ah, I just can't start new habits. I'm really struggling. Like if you, you're that type of person, like who starts and stops, starts and stops, go watch that. Now, chapter 14. Create a commitment device. What is this pre-commitment implementation intention? Okay. What it is, it, it's a choice you make in the present that locks in a better behavior for the future. It is the act of locking in your future actions when your mind is in the right place rather than letting your desires and cravings take you in the moment. It enables you to take advantage of your good intentions before you fall a victim to temptation. You can reduce overeating by asking a waiter to split half of your meal into a takeaway container and you eat the other half at the restaurant. Because a lot of people like, like me, like I'm at a phase right now where I can eat a lot. You know, I'm in a caloric surplus. I'm, I got certain physio, physical uh, mental goals that I'm working on that require me to eat an abundance of food and I can abstain but I can consume a lot. Like if I see it, like it's, it's, uh, I have to exert willpower to not consume it. So you can use these strategies like, hey, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And that way I can make a pre-commitment to myself like, okay, cool. I know I'm in an environment, I'm, you might enter an environment that is going to be triggering for certain cravings and cue you in certain ways that are unfavorable. So you can make a pre-commitment to manage that, just like the restaurant. Like, for example, if you know you spend a lot of money when you go out, whatever, go out anywhere, uh, like a shopping center, uh, a pub, like a bar, a restaurant, you leave your cards at home and you only take the cash that you can afford to budget. And this is a brilliant one I just like thought of on the spot here. It's like, okay, that's all you have. You only have a hundred chips, hundred dollars. You can't overspend if you don't have any more money. You don't have any more currency to expend. Or you could just leave your wallet at home entirely if you know you're the type of person to get triggered by unnecessary spending. The key is to change the task such that it requires more work to get out of the good habit than get started on the bad habit. So another example is like, all right, what if you buy a pack of something, paying ahead of time? Like you, maybe you want to start yoga. All right, you could go one at a time or you could buy a 10 pack, a 20 pack of something, all right? You want to drink, like a lot of people buy bottled water, like particularly in America. When I lived there, I was like, holy shit, a lot of people buy bottled water. Your tap water is just horrendous apparently. Um, like Melbourne, Australia, it's like very common to drink out of the tap, like it's people's all right whatever it's like it's clean enough where you don't really taste it the key is to change the task so that it requires more work to get out of the habit and start the good habits so you buy a pack of something instead of going one-on-one so you commit yourself to the service you've made a pre-commitment so when like that's an option for me for, for people who want to work with me um you can buy a pack of uh private sessions mentoring sessions or coaching sessions one-on-one if you want and that it's financially advantageous for people, but it also enables people to like make this, you make a financial commitment through that exchange. And that ties into the psychology of like, okay, uh, 10, 10 yoga classes, 20 um, 
a pack of bottled water. So that's what I was going to say. Like, you, you, you know, you want to replace drinking maybe soda with something else. Like a replacement might be like a, a carbonated, calorically free uh, drink. All right, so you, you replace it with that. But you buy a pack of it instead of just one. So you have constant cues to keep maintaining that behavior. We often think that we should give people more options and let them choose what they want to do. But if we are trying to incentivize behavior and make it more likely for people to follow through, pre-commitment strategies that utilize limited options to make decisions is a great method to increase adherence. Practically, this means you could offer less services and goods as options to reduce decision fatigue and overwhelm. <sighs> really to that one, backspace a little bit, because that's super practical. Like if you're in sales or marketing, if you, look, most people are. If you're a human on this planet, like you, you're selling yourself in some way or another, whether it's you want to impress a girl or a guy, uh, whether you're trying to sell a service or a good in a retail shop or on an e-commerce store in business, like most people are interacting with selling services or goods, right? Or yourself. So having, when you walk into a supermarket and you're walking down the aisles and you, you haven't made a pre-committed intention to what you're going to buy, you are in that bitch for all day. You are in there forever. And you are, you almost always walk out with things that you don't need or you didn't say you wanted because you did not make a pre-committed plan. Here is my list. I've thought about it. This is what I need for the meals of the week. If you know what you need, you know where you need to go to get what you need. You visualize, I need to go here, outskirts of the stores where usually all the refrigerated things are. It's usually where the most fresh produce is. All the aisles, particularly the, the, where you walk in the store, is designed for the most uh, high-ticket items where stores want to sell a lot of. So you're aware of the psychology psychology of uh, uh, visual merchandising. And so, okay, you, like, just like common sense as well. You just think about it. Like, okay, oh, so so the, the most popular items, the things that people get the most are in the middle at eye level. And then children, when you think about children, where are their eye level? Are their eye level about two feet down from where yours are? So think about... Eye level for kids and how that could be tempting for them if they walk in the aisle that's got all the candy or the cereal or the whatever and you walk through that aisle they haven't made pre-commitment implanta- implementation but now you need to manage that overwhelm of them wanting x y and z i know a lot of parents and adults listen to this so it's like okay let's design the environment the pattern uh the implementation intention so we reduce decision fatigue and overwhelm and purchasing unnecessary things. The same can be said for like, I'm recently working with this with a client. It's like just being really struggling to commit to the act of, of uh, commit like physically training X uh, like two times a week. Right. We just, we just hadn't like when he sees me, he's great. He's committed. He's, he's attentive and like performs well, but just haven't been able to work into the schedule of implementing the program consistently, okay? So I, then I brought up this and I, and I shared some ideas around pre-commitment implementations, okay? This is where a calendar becomes very useful. Having a calendar to keep you accountable, a diary, something where you are accountable to your time. If your time is your life and you are not accountable to your life, then your life is a series of random events that you are just moving through you are a participant you don't want to just be a participant you want to be a player you want to control the game you don't just want to be an observer and so everybody has obligations like i got to turn up to work at 9 a.m and i finish at 5 p.m right you there is a pre-committed intention in the contract you signed in the agreement you made with your manager or boss or whoever okay you we all do pre-commit commitment implementation intentions we all do them you just got to do them for the habits that you want to actually commit to. For example, if you need to exercise two times a week for 60 minutes, well then, very simple. You look at that calendar. You don't have a calendar. You get a calendar. You start a Google calendar. You set up the, you just, you sit down for 15 minutes and you set it up and you just put in all your, your block. You have a look at your schedule and you see all the blocks of time. And then once you do that once, you can set up recurring events and you're set up, and if everything's hitting you with notifications, you're cued for the good behavior. If you just f- 
you set up that system once and then it serves you tremendously throughout the future. But if that's not going to work with him, you know where I'm going? I'm going like last week, what we talked about in that chapter, last week, in the last video, chapter 13. All right, we got to scale this back. This program is too long. Ideally, yeah, if, yeah you, for, for, for the outcomes and goals we're looking for, a 60 to 90 minute session going through XYZ uh, program is going to be best. But it's clearly not working. We need to scale it back. So I'd scale it back to 15 minutes. If that doesn't work, I scale it back to five minutes. Like I, we, I got backups, I got next strategies in place, which is what we we're talking about with the two minute strategy last week, uh, in the last video. So more options is not always better, particularly in e-commerce, particularly like, you know, unless you're some big global chain or you're a part of a big organization that can afford and has like a strong hold on a market, then often you can't get away with hundreds of different options like a supermarket does. You're not a supermarket, right? You don't have market share over an area. And if you do, then that's a different game you're playing. But something to be considerate of is not overwhelming yourself with a whole host of different options in your environment. And if you make that pre-committed intention, you are much more likely to perform the task than if you say, oh, I'm going to read tomorrow. Really, when? What time? What location? After doing what? If you do not define those things, then the habit is unlikely to begin and maintain. You do not need to do that continually, but you need to most likely do it. It will be very helpful for you to do it to begin with. So let's talk about a study. Implementation tensions. In 2001, researchers in Great Britain began working with 248 people to build better exercise habits over the course of two weeks. Subjects were divided into three groups. First group was the control group. They did nothing. This is what you compare to. They were simply asked to track how often they exercised. The second group was the motivation group. They were asked not only to track their workouts, but read some material on the benefits of exercise. Researchers also explained to the group how exercise could reduce the risk of coronary heart disease and improve their health. They have information education. Surely that's motivational, right? Finally, there was a third group. These subjects received the same presentation as the second group. So they had equal levels of motivation based off the education. However, they were asked to formulate a plan for when and where they would exercise over the following week. Specifically, each member of the third group completed the following sentence. During the next week, I will partake in at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on day, time, place. During the next week, I will partake in 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on Monday at 3 p.m. in my local gym on the way from work. What happened? Hopefully, I, and I'm going to put this on the screen. I don't usually put visuals on the screen for these ones, but I will. In the first and second group, 30, first group, control group, these... Uh, these are the people who just exercise when they want to. So 38% of people in the first group exercise at least once per week. Okay, cool. The motivational group, education, the presentation seemed to have no meaningful impact. In fact, they exercise only 35% of the time, but it's a small variance, so they're very similar, right? So almost like there's no clear benefit. Guess what group three? the people who had the pre-committed implementation tension. Simply by writing down the plan that said exactly when and where they intended to exercise, the participants in group three were much more likely to follow through and 91% of people exercised at least once per week. That is a threefold, two to threefold increase from mid-30s to 91% adherence to exercising once a week and for those next those those nine percent that didn't all right i'd scale it back all right you're not you're not going to exercise for 30 minutes you're going to exercise for 15 five minutes two minutes but let's just use this as a general guide to point us in the direction that pre-implementation intentions are effective so the format and James Clear, if I remember, I'll, pu I'll put the link in the description if I remember, but you should really buy the book. Link's below if you want to buy it. It's an affiliate link, by the way. I make 
I make one cent if you buy it. Um, big bucks. If he has in his book and he has in the resources associated with the audiobook that when, here it is, so you can write it down on a piece of paper on your phone. When situation X arises, I will perform response Y. I will meditate one minute at 7 a.m. in my kitchen after making morning coffee. So you kind of tie it in when you have it stack. It's going to be much more likely that you do it if you have it stacked too. I will study Spanish for 20 minutes at 6 p.m. in my bedroom. I will exercise for one hour at 5 p.m. in my local gym before I get home. Because if I get home, I'm a lazy ass. I will make my partner a cup of tea at 8 a.m. in the kitchen after I make my own or after I make my smoothie, whatever. So that, oh man, like I can't emphasize enough how important a pre-implementation intention is. And this is where the calendar are built in because I, my calendar is my constant pre-implementation intentions. I pre-implement intention, my meals, like when I have a shower, just because I want to be in control of my time. It's like, I want to know where my time is being spent. I want to know where my life's going. <laughs> I want to know where my life is being invested in. Because if I'm not feeling good, if I'm not feeling fulfilled or uh, I'm not feeling grateful, I'm not feeling like vigor and vitality, well, what's going on? Like, Okay, well, the things I'm doing must not be giving me the outcomes I want. Okay, what am I doing? Well, I know it's in my calendar. It's in my diary. It's in this. But if you don't know, then you're just, uh, I don't even know where to start. I don't know what's causing. I don't know why I feel like this. Of course, you don't know why. You don't know what's going on in your life. You don't know where you spend your time. You don't know how much time you actually spend like on social media, on like the, the you know, it was crazy. The, uh, every week, um, the iPhones will give you an update on like your screen time. And consecutively, it's like, it's hilarious to me because I, don't, I, I think <laughs> mine does not reflect a normal person's because, you know, it might be three, four, five hours, whatever. But I look at it and it's like, okay, it's Evernote. It's Google Sheets. It's My Fitness Pal. It's uh, Google Drive, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like the social media is, is like at the bottom. Uh, and it's like very abnormal uh, compared to the norm um, because I've, con I've tried to control my environment. Uh, so I can be more productive because those are apps that are associated with productivity and like kind of note-taking and just things that I have to do uh, from a productive standpoint. Let's continue. Pre-implementation intention. Pause, stop, do it right now. Then we can keep watching. If you're not doing, it, doing something from this video podcast, then what are we doing? What are we doing? Lastly, finishing off. How to automate a habit and never think about it again. The best way to break a bad habit is to make it impractical to do. Increase the friction of it so much that you don't even have the option to act. If an object is so heavy, it can't be moved because you don't have the strength to apply enough necessary force to move it. So how can you do that for the, th the destructive habits? One-time choices that create increasing value over time. Single choices for continual high return on investment and one-time actions that lock in good habits. So I made this long list of what I mean by this, okay? What are some, how do we automate these habits? How do we automate habits and never have to think about them again? How do we make one-time choices that increase in value over time? Like single choices for continual high return of investment. Okay, let's, have, let's, have, let's brainstorm. Like what could dramatically kind of transform your health, your life, your productivity, your financial situation, your well-being, blah, blah, blah. By one-time choice. Okay. Mm, let's go. You can get a water filter, right? You can get a water filter because tap water, I was talking about it, I think, in this video or the last one, um, generally is going to be much lower quality and have all types of various chemicals that could be endocrine disrupting or just destructive to your health. Let's not even go too far into it. That's for strength of sod. Get a water filter. Clean water. Who doesn't love clean water? Cool. Um, all right, I want to control my food intake. Well, you could buy, you could discard and put away your big plates and you could use smaller plates to reduce. You, can, you can't, you can only put so much food on a small bowl or a small plate. So if you want to consume less, use smaller plates. If you want to consume more, use larger plates. You could get blackout curtains, an eye mask, install blue blocking uh, apps and red globes in lamps uh, in every room or uh, light strips that control and then do a variety of light colors to improve your sleep. 
These are all one-time purchases that you can make that can dramatically improve your sleep. Eye masks, blackout curtains, blue blocking apps, blue blocking glasses. What else? Uh, and this is like a list that I think like, all right, let's let's all like hold ourselves accountable and audit our own lives. Like, let's keep going. Like, these are all going to be helpful. You can get uh, plants, garden plants uh, to clean the air in your home and provide decor and improve your well-being. In fact, I've seen uh, research that people... Uh, People who were in hospitals, um, recovering in hospitals, I can't remember the condition they had. If they had a window that looked out outside, you know, onto trees and nature, they were able to recover faster. There was multiple days that they had on improving their uh, hospital stay, okay, which is so profound because it's like there's something, um, something really powerful about nature and at least seeing green in your environment. In fact, that's what I need to do in this room. I've done it. We've done it downstairs. I need to do it in this room. I see no green. Ah, but I do have them on my curtains up. That's another thing. Like first thing you do in the morning, you could have like, you know, if you if you're uh, if you're Iron Man, you could have the automatic shutters that open up in the morning. Yeah, cool. You know, I ain't in that tax bracket. Yeah, that's probably not even that expensive at this point in, in the 21st century. But um, you get something like that. You could just cue yourself to open those blinds straight away. You have uh, something like sunlight. Bam, straight away. Next one. Turn off all notifications in your phone. At minimum, turn off all the social media app notifications. That's a one-time habit that will dramatically improve your, uh, reduce your neuroticism, reduce your anxiety, improve your productivity. Like we, we could go, that's another video on how that could help. You get a dog or a cat or a pet or a fish. That's continual like value over time for one's life. Uh, that for a lot of people is extremely valuable. You can buy a standing desk. Look at that. Unfollow all the accounts on social media that trigger negative emotion and neuroticism. Order all groceries online for pickup or delivery to minimize shopping for air unnecessary items and save time. Disable autoplay on all streaming services and YouTube to minimize mindless watching. Delete all food delivery apps if you're ordering too much takeout every week. Enable two-factor authentication on all accounts as possible and get a password manager and change your passwords and create new passwords that have random characters in them and use a password generator leave fruit vegetable bowl out on the kitchen top invest in a quality mattress and pillow that fits your body the wider and narrower your shoulders uh, is going to dictate how much lateral flexion your neck will need to do when you sleep this will dictate how toned Taut your trapezius gets, your levator scapula, sternocleomastoid, the, the muscles around the neck and shoulder complex get uh, when you're sleeping. You know, you spend what, a third of our lives sleeping. We should probably get something that's comfortable and like ergonomically designed. Uh, turn off all your devices and electronics in your bedroom before sleeping. These are all amazing one-time habits that m a lot of people, you might be doing some of them. If you're not doing like at least 80% of them, like there's work to do. Like I hope this gives, I hope it wasn't like boring. Um, like I think these are really profound like ideas that people can implement. It's like, oh, I'm not doing that. Oh yeah, that really could change my well-being, my productivity, my health, my feeling, my vitality, my day-to-day. -day. You know, if the average person did at least half of the one-time actions on the list, even if they didn't give another thought to their habits, most would find themselves living significantly better a year from now. If, if compared to if they weren't doing almost any. If you're doing half, what if you do the other half? Like, how much better can we get from one-time choices that can pay dividends to us throughout our life? This is how we can automate a habit, never think about it again, and it can run in the background like a background operating system pro program that just runs and improves. That plant's going to constantly take out CO2 and clean particulates out of the air. Let's, let's not belabor it too much. Like that, That's it. Automating habits, never think about them again, and pre-implementation intentions. This is how we make bad habits like really hard and good habits like kind of inevitable, right? This is the place that I feel like I'm, I'm at now. Where I feel kind of like a bit like a, a bit like a psychological habit superhero, right? That's a weird thing to say, but it's like, yeah, I, I feel in control. Like I feel like I can change, manipulate behaviors like really well if 
I need to. It doesn't feel really hard. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of friction. And it's because I implement and work on things that is in this book and I've already done so for years, but it takes time to get to that point where you feel like a psychological habit forming superhero. Call me, I don't know what you call me. You make up your own superhero name. I can't do that for myself. All right, Marvel, call me. Um, That's it. Chapter 14, how to make good habits inevitable, bad habits impossible. The next chapter, we will go to law four and how to make habits satisfying and the rule of behavior change and talk about uh, the gratification and rewards and things along those lines. Hope you guys, I hope this is valuable. I hope these are all valuable. Uh, This really is for me, like so I can reaffirm the learnings. But then another point is like, I do want to, I recognize there's a lot of unnecessary pain, suffering, and hardship in the world. Unnecessary, right? And I think a lot of people could dramatically change their lives for the better if they implemented some of these strategies in this book. And if I can help uh, deliver and educate the messages in here and make them in a more digestible way by someone who's not a robot or someone who's not like, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir. You know, someone who like... It's just being themselves and, and is okay with that. Uh, someone who's okay with saying like ums and ahs and taking pauses and like going on tangents and like rambling like I'm doing now. Like I, I hope it, it's more interesting and engaging and relatable. It's like, oh man, I, I don't have to like learn from like a boring lecturer or like read a book. Like I, I can watch a video and I can still like really improve my life and like, implement some strategies and listen to this guy and maybe maybe he can facilitate and spark something in me that I hadn't thought about before and you know honestly that's that's not why I do it but but it's like it's like a layer down of like something I, I like another kind of component to like all right this is another reason why I do this as well it's not the reason but it, it's just a reason and so I hope it's valuable thank you guys for for watching listening and your for your attention like if you want to know more, if you want to see more, subscribe, hit notifications so you know when they're coming up. Um, I've got a bunch of other series on, book series on YouTube. You can find everything I do at Alexander Emanuel, um, everything related to my coaching at Strength of Saad uh, on all social media platforms. All the links are in the description if you, if you want to stay apprised. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.